are going to have a little bit of a different meeting this morning because we cannot uh, get quorum right now because JPS has some pretty important things happening in the other room, long agenda. Uh, so we're going to kind of, we're going to move through our agenda this morning on things that don't require a vote. Um, we particularly want the presentations and those kind of things, public comment, we'll be happy to hear this morning. Um, I don't really have any remarks, but anything that requires a vote, we're going to put off for now. So with that, um, start with public comment. Sure. Well, good morning. It's cracking me. <laughs> Did you guys all hear that? Oh, yeah. Yikes. So uh, good morning. So just amazingly enough, um, October is here. Um, Sheila, thanks for being at the Village of Addison's Earth Flag and Water Quality presentation. I think they've done a lot of good things. It's nice to give them some notice. This Thursday, Antunas, the company in Carroll Stream that has over 900 solar panels, um, is receiving their earth flag and their water quality flag for efforts they've been making. I think it's 10 o'clock. Um, we have uh, two recycling events still coming up. We were at Milton Township and Wooddale had theirs this Saturday and so forth, but um, Darien Rotary is October 22nd, and the sheriff is helping us there with syringe and medicine collection, so we're grateful for that. And Addison is having their kind of half, every half year recycling event. <laughs> it's like, hey, we have quorum. No, no, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> That's right. There's uh, over 20 pumpkin smash towns all registered. We've got, I think, through tomorrow and the next day to get those in. But real important is coming up Drug Take Back Day, October 29th. So Drug Take Back Day, of course, impacts multiple departments here at the county. One is the health department so that seniors don't take the wrong medicine in the medicine cabinet and kids don't take drugs that they're not supposed to. So that's that part. The water part is people Hopefully health departments and doctors are no longer telling people to flush medicines down the toilet or pour them down the drain. And then it doesn't go to the landfill. So these are kind of like landfill, water, and health. So it's October 29th. So if anybody can help help spread the word about that, that is really important for all of us to, to know what's going on. And then Milton Township yesterday, the cooking oil project went really well. It was one of the, Saturday, sorry, was one of the best things that they had going besides electronics. Their paint company didn't show up, which was kind of, they had truck trouble. So some residents who came to their Milton Township that were kind of sad that the paint people didn't show up. So that's all I've got. Thanks. Thank you, Kay. Is he coming back? He's not. Uh, all right, so let's move on uh, to our presentation, the RRS Cafeteria Packaging Study. Just a little bit of history on this. Um, I really would like to see number six uh, foam banned from our campus. And so that's the, the results of taking a look at this to see what our alternatives are. Perfect. And then we have, we have um, Megan Weave with um, RRS who's going to do our presentation this morning. And then we have Diane Borski with um, the Care Center Dining Services who will um, also provide uh -huh. some input when it after uh, Megan does her presentation. She's on, right, Michelle? Yeah. Okay. I am on. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, good morning. Oh, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, thanks for that introduction. And I, um, I will try to go through this fairly quickly and get into the, the meat of it. I'm not sure how long I have for this segment, um, Joy. But. We don't have a quorum. So probably a little more than we might have given you if we had a quorum. Okay. Morning. Okay, gotcha. Okay. And then, Megan, I did forget to tell you, you'll have to ask us to advance the slides. We're, um, Michelle will do it on our end, okay? Perfect. That works. Yeah, if you can jump to the next slide. Um, yeah, so just really briefly, like Joy said, so uh, my name's Megan Weeb. I'm a consultant with RRS. RRS has uh, been a recycling and composting consultancy since the 80s, um, working with cities and counties and uh, other groups to advance recycling programs and um, use system analysis 
like this project. You can go to the next slide. Um, so in terms of the project approach, just really briefly, so, so what we did for this project is um, we looked at, we were given um, lots of great data from the cafeteria, uh, from the dining services staff. So we uh, received data in terms of what the, the three cafeterias are buying in terms of the uh, food service fare. So we we're primarily looking at things like cups and plates and uh, cutlery and things like that. We didn't go into, say, what the the chips or the food actually is packaged in. So we were looking at food service items. Um, I actually flew out, which was great, and I toured the three cafeterias. So I was looking at kind of the setups and looking at um, what materials were being provided on site. And then um, really the core of this project was to research some alternatives for everyone. So uh, we wanted to identify, you know, what materials are being bought and provided for customers at the three cafeterias and then um, provided, uh, provided research and some alternatives in terms of some items that were recyclable, some items that were compostable, um, and just some alternative items uh, if the cafeteria wants to move away from foam or look to become a little bit more sustainable in how materials are, um, what opportunities there are for the end of life for materials. So, um, so the inventory and then that alternatives research was um, combined and analyzed. And what we built out is uh, a, uh, an Excel matrix of the different items that are currently being purchased and then the alternative items along with cost and um, the, the weight of those items, which is important for diversion. So that was kind of the project approach. So if you wanna to go to the next slide. Um, yeah, just, just quickly on some of the, the matrix points. So that's that Excel spreadsheet with all of this data in there. Um, so it did mostly come from one vendor list. So the cafeterias have two others, I believe, Diane, that um, provide some of the packaging. Um, we looked at an, an annual approach. So the numbers that are presented, everything is done kind of on an annual basis. Um, we did look through, you know, each product that we had a line item for. We looked at whether it's currently recyclable in your system, whether it's currently um, compostable, what's it made out of, and who uses it. So there's some items on the list that might be used by the, the back of house dining services. And then most of the items are, um, or a good majority are used by consumers. Um, and so one piece of this too is that with all of the, the items that are currently being used and um, the alternatives that we researched, we called your current re recycling hauler and verified which materials can actually be recycled. And we also called potential uh, composting haulers to see what materials they would accept so that when you're thinking about decisions in terms of which um, inventory, Tory items might be switched out, you have a line on whether it can be recycled or composted um, and actually accepted in those cases. So you can go on to the next slide. Um, just a note on a couple of the, the challenges, and we can talk a little bit more about this afterwards, but um, so we did, you know, talk early on about reusables. Um, and there are, with the cafeterias, there's some issues with the, the plumbing infrastructure and uh, uh, garbage disposals are actually prohibited. Um, so that makes it a little bit of a challenge to, um, you know, so we didn't really look at reusables and it does, is something to keep in mind when you're thinking about uh, re recyclables that have food in them uh, because when they, 
get picked up and hauled, they should be mostly clean. Um, and then, you know, the cafeterias, there are a good majority of people that take their food containers to go. So this logistically, um, I mean, it's fairly common, but it means that whatever bins and systems you put in place at the cafeterias might not be what is the, the system where um, people are bringing those containers to. So um, they're being dispersed through the buildings and, uh, you know, people are taking them home as well and then throwing them out and things like that. So um, I think Diane is going to touch on this more, but staffing um, is a challenge right now for the cafeterias in a big way. So that's one thing to kind of consider when we're thinking about new inventory items and how that that um, how that is managed. Any questions on project approach too? I'm happy to talk mm -hmm. more about any of these details. So um, yes, I have to go ahead, Lynn. Um, <clears throat> am I understanding it then that you're saying because people take this food to go and it's, it's dispersed, I get that, that we really don't have the option of reusable containers? Like, does that make it off the table then? So we, for the, for the, for our study specifically, we, when we initially talked with environmental services, um, with the challenge of the, the actually the plumbing was the bigger issue of having kind of return dishes. Um, oh. If you, it, yeah, so um, if there was a reusable system, it'd most likely be offered, right? You'd have plates um, and silverware and things like that for your dine-in customers. And then you would still likely want to provide uh, takeout containers that are, um, so a single use product. So then this is more about infrastructure limitations very much than it is about the recyclable or reusable products that we have. Is that correct? Am I understanding? Yeah, there is some challenges for sure with that. Uh, from my perspective, I, I, I see uh, restaurants getting away from foam, moving to number five plastic, which is curbside recyclable. Uh, I just think that uh, number six foam, hard to recycle. You've got to take it somewhere where if we can move to something, my desire is to move to something that is uh, more readily recyclable can be, you know, people take food home. They can, they can take that number five plastic uh, to go container and put it in a curbside recycling. So are we not even, um, and pardon me if I'm getting ahead. So if you, if I'm getting ahead, you, you just let me know, but is it possible to look into, are we exploring um, helping the infrastructure, installing dishwashers to make this. I don't think permanent. that's part of this. Yes, we talked with facilities. We have not gone down that avenue because there's several limitations, is what we were told. In the 505, there's not the space. And here in 421, there was an issue with where the venting would go. Okay. It would impact the vegetative roof. Okay, because this seems to me like we're not really exploring the bigger picture. This seems, and again, please correct me if I'm if I'm misunderstanding this, but this seems like a duct tape issue. Then we're we're duct taping it instead of coming up with a solution like a permanent solution that would be better overall. I.e., making sure that we have dishwashers and then we move to plates and glass and all of that. Correct? Am I understanding it correctly? A lot of it depends on which facility we're talking about. I think at the care center, they're still using a lot of foam. That's one place, and they have dishwashers up there. Yeah, so I right. would like to see that change out. I think that's 421, like here right. specifically that I know of. Well, I don't think because since COVID, I don't think that the cafeteria has uh, a lot of people that come and sit down. It doesn't. And there. It doesn't. And so much of what's going out of there is on a foam plate or a yeah. foam container. and. I, they're just so much better alternatives to that. That's oh my gosh, kind of yes. step one here. So, right. And I get it. And I'm jumping ahead, but I just, I would just like to make a point that we're not just looking at step one or step two, but we're taking a much more zoomed out perspective and going right to step 10, which is if we're going to be leaders of environmental sustainability in DuPage County, this is how you lead. Thank you. <laughs> yes. So, 
Okay. Thanks, Megan. Go ahead. Thanks. And Megan, can I just jump in? This is Diane. Um, I just want to make sure you understand. Yeah. Care Center, we do not use a lot of foam products here. The only time we have been using them is because of COVID, putting all the units on isolation. So when we're out of COVID or whenever that may be, um, and prior to COVID, we were using all reusable items, china plates, flatware, foam is not a, it's a real safety issue uh, with residents with dementia. So we, we try our best not to use foam at all with the residents. So I just want to make sure you're, you understand that. Thank you, Diane. Go ahead, Megan. Yeah, great. Yeah, so, so just um, to frame you know, the results of this study, but this is focused on um, alternative single-use products. So those products that are recyclable, compostable, um, or just alternatives to foam and, and some of the other packaging. So, um, yeah, so we, we don't get into the reusables, but I'll keep that out there. So I think you can go to the next slide. Um, so here's just a quick summary look at uh, the products that we were looking at. So 171 items across the three cafeterias. Um, uh, almost, a, you know, a, a, the largest portion were plastic. Uh, so like you can see in the picture, some of those clamshells and plastic cups and things like that. The foam, there were 38 foam items um, across the three cafeterias that were being used, um, and then some paper products and some other products as well. You can go to the next slide. Um, yep, so like I said, yeah, 38 foam items. So some of the cups, containers, plates, things like that. Um, like someone was mentioning previously, and I'm, I'm sorry, I can't tell, uh, but yeah, so foam can't be recycled through traditional or conventional single stream recycling, so it's not the same bin that you put um, out with your rest of your recycling. So that makes it challenging. I know in uh, 421, there is a foam bin that Joy and her team have been um, driving separately to a facility uh, to recycle it. Um, and then, you know, there are the issues with foam environmentally in terms of um, it breaks apart, right, but it doesn't really down. Megan, so. I'm going to kind of move you forward just a little bit. Um, yes. I yep. think we're pretty aware of these things and we have another presentation behind you. So if, if we can move past this one. Yep. Yeah. You can go to the next slide. Um, so the options that we looked at, and there is a whole cost matrix that um, has all of the detailed information. So you can oh. kind of Explore alternatives as well to these options. But the options that we looked at, so option one was switching all of the foam products to recyclable products. So just switching those 38 items. The second option was switching all of the non-recyclables. So we looked at your list and there were some um, items like uh, cutlery, is plastic cutlery is, is not recyclable conventionally. So we looked at um, switching the foam and those non-recyclables to compostables. And then option three, switching um, as, many, as many products to compostables. And then with the rest um, that didn't have a good compostable alternative, uh, trying to maximize what can be recycled. And then the fourth option was to switch the foam to products that aren't foam, but potentially and are not necessarily recyclable or compostable, but they're just not foam. So those are the four options we looked at. You can go to the next slide. Um, so this is kind of an option summary. Um, so the current inventory, so we, um, the current inventory totaled to about $95,000. Uh, this is probably based on um, some, some of those other vendor lists. This is probably representing about 70% of all of the inventory data. data. So this is the current inventory um, 
the annual cost is probably a little bit higher. Um, and then, so in the column to the left is sort of the total new cost potentially with these programs. The, the next column is the, that cost difference. So how much more each option would be roughly speaking. And then um, the next two columns are the, the pound of switched items. So um, for, for example, option one, switching those 38 products um, based on how much there is used, about 2,300 pounds of products would be switched out to a different material. And then the next column over, if you captured 100% of everything that's being switched and now is being emphasized to be recycled because there are some items that your cafeterias are providing that technically could be recycled through your current hauler, but aren't maybe listed as recycle, recyclable on the cafeteria signage. So that's that total potential diversion number. And then the, the next columns are numbers of items switched versus composted versus disposed. So I can um, jump to a different summary slide just to keep moving. Um, so there's more detail on each of the options and what that exactly means. But if you wanna keep moving. Um, so this is kind of a different layout with a summary um, that includes the cost difference of the actual products. So switching to a recyclable product might be um, 10 to $20 higher for a case. Um, depends on what it is really. And then also this cost summary includes um, any service costs or recycling signage costs. So for example, in option two, there's quite a range because if you are going to buy compostable products, you will also likely want to set up a composting bin with service as well. Um, and then, so that's built into that cost. The other thing that's built into that cost is janitorial, so staff time to actually empty those bins on the daily, along with the recycling bins. Um, it's also a little bit of a range because um, we know with recycling supply chain issues, there's a lot of variability. Um, we also know that um, ultimately these items are still gonna to have to work within what dining services can do. So there might be an item or two that we've suggested that um, when it comes to implementation might not meet um, some standard or requirement that we're not aware of. So that's why there's a little bit of a range here. Um, and then that option for that uh, $36,000 is the, um, the non-foam but not recyclable or compostable option. And then at the bottom, kind of to sum up, um, is what we're calling kind of the best case diversion rate. So this is the rate if um, if things if everything was switched over, like we're suggesting in the option, and you captured about 70% of that material, which is a pretty good uh, capture rate, where that, that last, um, Row there is what we think is your best case diversion rate in town. So I went through that kind of quickly to speed it up. Um, do we want to, I don't know, Joy, do you want to talk, um, open it up for discussion or do, mm -hmm. should I give well, any more of the kind of sure. context? Yeah, so I, I, I know Diane wanted to, to address some of her thoughts in, uh, as well. Um, I did want to approach kind of where we go from here. I mean, ultimately, this is a, a health and human services committee concern and budget item because it is a, a care center expenditure. 
So Diane and I were trying to do some brainstorming about how, what do we do from here? Um, so our thought was perhaps environmental committee says, you know, this is what we're thinking. We're, then we send it to HHS or I, you know, I guess I'm trying to wrap my head around what's next because it does fall under their budget and not our budget. Um, so just some things to think, and they're the ones who have to implement it, right? Really. Couple questions. Um, so the best case diversion, are those numbers uh, related to compostable items? Yeah, yeah. So the best case diversion, so option one is just the recycling option. So that's just looking at if you switched out foam and if you then recycle that alternative, as well as, um, like I mentioned, there's some items that are actually being purchased that are recyclable that are currently not sort of um, listed or being recycled uh, in the cafeteria. So option one, that um, that best case diversion is just recycling, um, assuming that there's no composting added. Was, um, um, composting and then option, well. yeah, so option two and option three include composting. Mm -hmm. um, adding a third bin. And so that's why you see in the middle kind of there, um, we also factored in food waste um, capture because um, that's kind of the, the big, when you're thinking about composting the weight of food, right? Because it's got a lot of water in it. That's kind of your heaviest thing compared to the, the food service packaging. So um, that's why option two and option three have Kind of a um, higher best case diversion because you're not only switching more products but you're also adding that composting service. Thanks, Megan. So, so yeah. that is my next question: is where are we on the waste hauling audit? Is that addressing uh, food scrap recycling and those kind of things? So, I think that. That kind of needs some answers too, in order to figure out the best step forward with this. The the way the uh, working with CDM spent their recommendation was to separate out food scrap composting and wait until we had this study done, so that okay. we had the yeah. the generate the waste generation amount, okay. and then subscribe to a different service. Megan did reach out to. I believe LRS um, and Groot is our current hauler. I'm not sure if you reached out to Groot. LRS can take it, um, compost, the food scrap for composting. I don't recall, did you reach out to Groot? Um, I didn't wind up hearing back from Groot, but we could also follow up to that. Yeah, we reached out to them about a year ago and I they were kind of, Start because the of the, the low amount that we generate, it was hard for them to swing by. And so we were talking with them about including it in a residential route. So we were doing some brainstorming with Groot. But now that we have more data, I think we have, we're in a better position to pursue. Take a harder look. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. All right, thanks. All righty. Is that all you have for us this morning, Megan? Um, yeah, I, I, I think I can leave it there. I, the, the rest of the slides are a little bit more into um, some of the challenges and then, or, or things to consider. And then um, uh, some information around composting service um, in terms of best practices or, well, you, or things if, to think about for implementation. If so. you can provide that to Joy and if you can send that out to the committee so we can kind of have a better look at um, some of the issues. The challenges are certainly important. Um, and then we can get some feedback from Joy about trash hauling and, and maybe we can put this all together and figure out the best way forward. So thanks so much, Megan. I appreciate your time this morning. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Um, did you want to, did you want to ask Diane if she has any? Yes, I would like to hear whatever Diane has to add this morning as well. Okay, um, so as Megan said, there's a, a few things that, you know, the list, her matrix, we haven't been able to review that yet. So making sure that those are usable products that are gonna meet our, our needs, that's number one. Number two is the supply chain issue. It's still a problem. Um, we have to make sure these are stocked items that we can get consistently on a weekly basis. Um, otherwise we'll have to be scrambling to find something else to fill. and 
It may not always be a compostable or a recyclable. It, we're going to have to get whatever we can get our hands on. So I just want to make sure you're all aware of this. The supply chain issue has improved for a little bit and now it's gotten worse again. Um, so we're still having lots of issues with getting things in, in our hands. Um, the other thing would be our staffing. Megan did, did touch on our staffing. We have four employees for the two cafeterias. Um, so anything above and beyond the serving of the food and and um, cooking food and checking people out at the cash registers, anything above that will be tough. We're gonna, we definitely will need help from either the housekeeping department in both buildings or something if we're gonna be recycling or composting and, and moving this, these, you know, the bags around. Um, so we are gonna need some assistance with that. There's just no way that we can handle that right now until we get more staff. Unfortunately. And facilities, the housekeeping falls under facilities, so under public works committee. So it might be at this point better to kind of, I guess, come up with your thoughts here, make some, give you guys a chance to look at this, come up with a recommendation and then send it to both those committees mm -hmm. to further address the dishwashing and that way they can more completely um, talk to you about the capital investment and then um, HHS. That's kind of where I'm going. Dominoes. I'm happy to do it. Yeah. <laughs> if you give a mouse yeah. a cookie. Yes. <laughs> okay. Is that all you have for us, Diane? Yep, that's it. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Questions, anybody? Um, sounds like we've got some talking amongst other committees to do to make some of this happen. Uh, consensus to move forward, I guess, would yes. be. Um, appropriate at this time and let's take is a that, look is at that, that. Is that allowed? Oh. <laughs> Someone's got to be the Debbie Downer. No. <laughs> Usually the lawyer. You're really good at Usually it. Usually the lawyer. All right. I mean, wait till next meeting for I that. Mean, wait till next meeting so then you can circulate everything that they gave out. Yeah. And you know, get all the information. That's a good plan. All right. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah, yeah. Or it's okay. We still like you. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. Um, Note to self. <laughs> okay, and then uh, Joy, the uh, uh, pilot propane tank recycling project. Um, do you want to chat about this? Yeah, sure. Do you want me to take it? Yeah, sure. I can do a quick uh, little update on it. We did a pilot program at the Blackwell Forest uh, Family Campground. Uh, it ran from, I think it was around um, April or so, or whenever the camping season opened until September. We got, I think it was 31 propane, two isobutate. And that got us around 35 pounds, about 20% full. So for a pilot program, that was pretty good. And, um, and we're looking at uh, think continuing it potentially and kind of seeing if we can get it uh, into more people said that, hey, if you're bringing a one pound propane tank, this is an option. Because typically those aren't, there aren't many options to recycle those. And so this was kind of a good uh, program we had going. I'm sorry, you're taking the big tanks too? Or just uh, no, the small the one, the one pound ones. Uh, sorry. The cost of the program was less than $100, you oh. know, for our pilot year. So we were really pleased with that. The Forest Preserve was so happy with the program that they're actually going to move the, the collection container to Green Valley um, for the fall, winter. Apparently, they have more camping in Green Valley in the fall and winter yeah. season. So they'll continue the collection and we'll see how it goes from there. Yeah. But, They've been uh, saying that they're going to alert people because they have to register um, anybody's using the uh, Youth campground that's the register beforehand, so that's how they're going to spread the word that time and try to get it more, uh, more people. Because yeah, they've been saying they have uh, more programs there, and it might get more um, people kind of uh, aware of it. Low cost and effective. Good yeah. job. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All righty. Um, I think that's it for our committee meeting this morning. Unless anybody else has. Uh, any questions and we will carry over to next month any questions that we have. Um, we'll get that information out to you and start the process. You want me to run out and find a board? Were there any no, folks all, in here um, still in still an executive room? session? He said. Yeah. Hold on. Ooh, well, let me see if I can grab her because we do have three a couple things, things that, that, that could we could use some action. Thank you.
Yeah. yeah. So Sheila, Groot is yeah. now composting, we've kept composting the businesses. They're the ones that are doing Antunas. Nice. Okay, good to know. Okay. They are. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, and they do my Well, that's where the dental which they right. said they were. Right. Now they are doing food scrap too. Catherine? I have food scrap picked up, yeah. Paperdale has had that for a while with them, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. We have the oh, yeah. Yeah. Three of you promised to go to public works after, so that she hasn't worked. I see <laughs> how this works. All right. So interesting situation. So we're going to call this meeting to order at okay. nine eleven. Uh, roll call, please. Yeah, and then you're just gonna have to add her to that. Member Pachowski, Vice Chairwoman Chaplin, Member Hart, Member LaPlante, here, Member Phillips, here, Chairwoman Rutledge, here, and then. Uh, we need a vote, but we don't. Okay, I uh, would like to invite uh, Member Ozak to our committee this morning. Thank you for sit for yeah. leading JPS. <laughs> That's the uh, whole jam packed agenda over there yeah. this morning. So thank you. All right, uh, then uh, first, uh, I need approval of our minutes from September 6, 2022. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, for parent committee approval, we have an action item of agreement between the County of DuPage, Illinois, eWorks and eWorks Electronic Services uh, and Reverse Logistics Group America, Inc. to provide electronic recycling to residents of DuPage County, amount not to exceed $10,000. Um, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next, we have an authorization for overnight travel for ILC SWMA. Uh, overnight travel request for environmental and sustainability program manager from November 3rd through the 4th in Utica, lovely Utica, Illinois. Expenses to include registration, transportation, lodging for approximate county cost of $375. So moved. Uh, we have a second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Third authorization for overnight travel to the same, uh, uh, I'm sorry, same event. November 3rd and 4th, expenses to include registration and transportation uh, for approximate county cost of $375. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. And I believe that's it. Can uh, any old business? Any new business? Without objection, we're adjourned. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs>